Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. <laughs> That's so bad. Scottish. Scottish. Haggis. Haggis. That's the one, laddie. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're working on the Scottish Claymore. If you're new here, that's not actually how I talk. I talk a little more like that. But we are indeed working on the Scottish Claymore. Today is part five, and yesterday you saw us end off by trying to grind the fuller. It is not all the way there. We got some more grinding to do. It's gonna be another long day of trying new things, learning, experimentation. Hopefully no failure today. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So thank you for joining me. So I have the fuller line roughed out. What I now want to find out, however, is what is the thickness there at the bottom of the fuller right now as it stands roughed out. So let's see if I take these magnets, put my calipers on it. 19.75 with two magnets. Take away 16. 3.75 millimeters thick at the bottom of the fuller line. So with 3.75 millimeters of thickness up here, I, I, it, it kind of feels like it's about the same thing the whole way down. It means I got plenty of material to work with. I'm gonna thin that down uh, just a smidge more before we start working on the bevels. And I think I'm in fact going to be thinning it down freehand now that I've got it set being, uh, being freehand shouldn't be too much of an issue. As I was working on the grinder, I was adjusting the, uh, the height of the small wheel there so that as we got down the tapered blade there, um, we were trying to keep it as centered as possible. It looks pretty centered here. It's a little off to that side. Freehand should be able to fix that. If not, I will put the, uh, I will put the tool rest back on and work it that way. So yeah, lots more grinding to go.
Mowgli. So after many, many hours in the grinding room, here I am after having scribed a horizontal line. I had already done this before I made the uh, before I made the filler, but uh, silly me, I then ground the bevels before getting the tang shoulders set. That's what I'm doing right now. It's too wide for me to be able to use a file guide, a carbide file guide that I can just clamp up and then file to the file guide. Instead, I'm just gonna be working to scribe lines on either side. Now, of course, as we've learned over doing these projects, it's best to get a nice radius in the transition between the blade and the tang. That way, we don't cause the stress riser that a sharp, sharp transition would cause. Now I tell you, I'm certainly no expert with a file. I am just trying to learn just as much as the next guy. But what I do know is the best way to use a file is only with the push strokes. You give it a little bit of a clean every so often, you can get a proper file card to be able to clean a file properly. But it's only gonna cut when I push forwards. So there's only, uh, only a reason to touch it to the metal when I am pushing forwards and cutting. This is actually a brand new file, first time I've used it. Now let me tell you, there is nothing quite as satisfying as using a new file and feeling it just cut away at the steel with absolute ease. Very pleased that I, uh, very pleased I got some new ones. This round file is just a chainsaw file, which is uh, very nice because they're very easy to get a hold of and they're also very inexpensive. Hell, all good files are inexpensive compared to the work that they'll do for you. There is nothing like having a good file, spending, uh, spending a little extra for the quality. It'll save you a lot of elbow grease. So now, using the side of the file that doesn't have teeth facing downwards, so I don't cut into my radius too much, I'm just gonna clean up the, uh, the tang area here. And with a little tweak, now I believe we are ready for the heat treat. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for normalizing cycle number one. It's unideal. But we're going to use the forge. We've got a tube in the forge to get a more even heat. And I'm going to paint the forge to heat it up. Back and forth, hopefully get an even heat. Then three normalizing cycles before the hardening.
so we have hardened it, and you can see the Martin site, that gray. It's always been a, a wa. Oh, buddy! That's a warp. Holy moly, that's a warp and a half. Oh, boy. That's. <laughs> See that? that that's a problem.